Mitten Min's Illinois Adventure Part 2. If you remember from last time, we are going to pick up today right after Victor has to return the wedding ring. And Mitch and Min are going to help him because if they don't help him, he's the only one who knows where their parents are. So Mitch and Min and Victor are on their way to return the wedding ring. The title for chapter four is called Henka. And then this is the illustration that is at the bottom of that page. Night fell upon the farm in the long and lazy way a late summer night will fall. The faraway chorus frogs began to sing while the night air gently teased the tall field grasses into a dance. The air was heavy with the scent of water and still hot from the day, so the mice were moving slowly. We must first go quietly up to the house and in through the knot hole at the back screen door whispered Victor. Mitt and Min followed him across the barnyard and up to the entrance. They slipped in quietly and huddled together on the inside so that Victor could tell them the rest of the plan. But first he had to warn them about Henka. Henka was the farmer's house cat and she didn't like mice. Nervously, Mitt and Min followed Victor through the kitchen and toward the pantry door. It was slightly open and as Victor nosed, in more open, nosed it more open, the door squeaked. It squeaked only a little and it didn't wake the farmer who was sleeping in a bedroom nearby. Instead, it woke Hanka. All at once, the kitchen was a flurry of three mice trying to outrun the well-fed black and white tabby cat. Her stubby paws were swiping the air as she pounced for the mice. The three split in three different directions to confuse the cat. Victor was on the sugar canister near the dish with the wedding ring in his mouth when, all of the sudden, meow! Henka cornered Victor in the pantry. So here's an illustration showing Henka chasing the mice. Victor dropped the ring in the dish as he had planned. He looked straight at Henka, who muttered to him in a low cat tone. Why, Victor, I never knew that fear had such big eyes. Watch closely now because I'm going to eat you. Here's a cute little illustration of Victor dropping the ring in the dish. Henka pounced upon Victor. Mitt wanted to run away and stay safe, and yet he wanted to help Victor at the same time. Min could not tell if she wanted Victor to live because he was a good mouse, or if she wanted him to live because he was the only hope of finding their parents. Being kind of hurt, no matter how it may hurt them, Mitt and Min decided they would both help to save Victor. Mitt spotted a shelf over the window with the same type of shiny silver pails that were in the barn. Remembering how much noise they made when they fell, he jumped up on the shelf and looked at Min. Min knew just what to do. She ran to Henka's backside and pulled the cat's tail. When the cat turned around to yell in the disturbance, Mitt knocked a pail off the shelf and it fell right over Henka's head. The cat was angry now that her head was in a pail and she began to spin round and round in circles. As she did, the three ran out of the house and into the yard. They hid in the rose garden where it was dark enough to remain unseen. As they waited to catch their breath in the slight glow from the moonlight, they saw a figure lurking in front of the barn door. It was Henka, and she looked mad, really mad. Chapter five, Lunt. The three knew they could not return to the barn because Henka was waiting for them. They must start off for the farm two roads away where Mitt and Min's parents were living. 
it was night and there was danger, but what choice did they have? Victor urged Mitt and Min to follow him quiet quickly from the rose garden to the water pump at the edge of the farm. When they reached the pump, Victor told them they must run quickly through the meadow and to the edge of the first road. Mitt and Min followed Victor through a series of paths that traced through the meadow. Just as they reached the edge of the first road, a large, silent shadow cast a blanket of total darkness in the night sky above them. It was Lunt, and she was on the move. Lunt was a great horned owl, and she lived in an abandoned red-tail hawk's nest at the edge of the meadow. She saw the three mice racing across the field and flew in to snatch them just as they had reached the road. She was circling now once, twice. Okay, I'm going to show you this because this is in your booklet. Okay, so this is the illustration that's in your booklet. Min tried to hide in the tall metal grasses, burying herself deep in the blades while Mitt and Victor hid behind a nearby field stone. Lunt landed on the ground between them and looked from left to right. The moonlight washed the summer meadow in shades of gold, and Lunt's eyes reflected the blaze of her hunger. Which one to eat first? As Lunt began to reach for men, something parted the grasses. It was coming their way, and it was very large. It was Hanka. Swindler Brothers Farm. Lunt spotted the cat as quickly as the cat spotted Lunt. Their eyes locked and Lunt decided that perhaps the cat would be a better dinner. In a flash of wings and fur, Lunt was chasing Henka through the meadow. As the three mice watched them disappear, Min spoke first. So much for the owl and the pussycat, wouldn't you say? The three laughed as they made their way across the road and into the forest. When they reached the second road, not far from the farm, they stopped to wait for an old work truck that was sputtering down the dirt road. It had one headlight missing and the tailgate was rattling. As the three made their way closer to the farm, the sky moved from deep of night to early morning, the time when darkness was fading, yet morning light was not yet rising. The sky was a smoky haze of dark blue and gray as they reached their destination. Well, this is it exclaimed Victor. This is where your parents are living. The farm did not look anything like the Nelson farm. It was a simple farm with one barn that was leaning badly to the right side. The boards in need of new paint and nails. The fence around the pen beside the barn was rusty and broken in many places. Although they had yet to see any hogs, the scent told them that it was a hog farm. Mitt noticed the barn must have been in better shape a long time ago. There was a plaque on the side of the barn that read, Swindler Brothers Farm, Happy Healthy Hogs. But those letters were crossed off with paint, and beneath them, new words were spelled out something else. They spelled out, Swindler Brothers Farm, Fat, Lazy pigs. Mitt began to weep. His heart felt heavy for his parents as he couldn't bear to think about how terrible it must be for them to live here. Mitt jumped on Victor. He couldn't wait any longer to see his mother and father and Min was as des just as desperate. Where are they, Victor? Can't you bring them to us now? The sun was getting a bit higher in the morning sky and the Duroc hogs were starting to stir about the barnyard. They were indeed fat, lazy pigs, thought Mitt. Their ears were hanging low upon their faces and their bellies were soft and caked with old dry mud. 
They walked slowly to the discarded bathtub that was their food trough, filled and ready for them, and they began to snort and forage and fill their faces with their morning meal. Victor looked at the barnyard. It seemed as if there was twice as many hogs as last time that he had been there. Victor counted as he filled the pen. Thirty, forty, fifty. Then came the medium-sized pigs. And among the sows and the boars were piglets running here and there. Victor stopped counting at one hundred and twelve. Min tightened her ears to her head to muffle the noise of all the snorting and sniffling. And Mitt was growing impatient with Victor. But just then, the sea of hogs parted to the far sides of the pen as a large grayish black goose waded through them. The goose walked slowly, its body nearly skimming the ground and its wings darting here and there to help it stay balanced. The goose was Quimby, a tall loose goose, gentle in nature. Quimby spotted Victor and his companions right away and nosed in on Min, sensing she needed some ribbing. Do you know how you to get down from a horse? asked Quimby. Min stammered a bit, not knowing what to say, but then she quietly said, No, I don't know how to get down from a horse. Sorry. Quimby laughed. <laughs> That's right, old friend. Because you don't get down from a horse, you get down from a goose. And with that, Quimby turned in a complete circle and plopped herself down amidst the three of them. Mick could not wait any longer. Where are our parents? Your parents? asked the goose. Yes, our parents, said Mitt in a straight and serious tone. Quimby looked confused and Victor stepped in to explain. Victor told Quimby the story of Mitt, how he had lost his mitten and how he had traveled everywhere to find it. He had told how Min had traveled as well and that the pair met at the Cheese Jamboree in Wisconsin and they had discovered that they were brother and sister. Victor told about Lilka and how she met them at the Jamboree and told them how she knew where their parents were. He finished by telling Quimby that he had brought them here so that they, so that they could be together with their parents at last. Quimby straightened her neck and pulled her goose face downward in a serious manner. Then she stretched her neck out to Mitt and Min and said the saddest words the pair ever thought they could hear. Your parents are gone. Okay, stay tuned for tomorrow. Bye-bye.